Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. As Salafis in the 90s, for example, we found that actually the majority of scholars did. And not only were we not doing, which is fine, because a minority opinion is, a, is an acceptable opinion, but we were dividing. Maybe you, you, and, you know, he and he weren't actually dividing, but on the whole, as an aggregate, our dower was dividing on difference of opinion issues. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Once a dower, see, individual mistake. Oh, uh, uh, Ibrahim says to me, Abu Ali, why are you banging on about X? I said, because isn't there an ijma on it? Isn't it? No, Abu Ali, there's a difference of opinion. I said, oh, oh, Allah, make Tawbah, go to the people who I messed it up with the apologies. I might do it again next year. And then Abdul Haq comes to me and says, Abu Ali, why are you dividing on full issues? I, I thought, oh my, subhanAllah, I didn't know it was a legitimate difference of opinion. At least I've got my basics right. That What's the basics? I can't divide on legitimate differences. But my weakness is I don't have enough knowledge to know the details of what those legitimate differences may or may not be in some issues. That's fine. And maybe you can excuse me. I hope God will excuse me. But if I'm not even aware of the concept and I just think, well, I don't even have this concept of difference of opinion, not difference of opinion or soul for all. And that becomes generic. And even down to scholars and sheikhs and tulab, students of knowledge, not being clear about that then you actually have a huge problem. So in the, by 95, uh, I'll tell you a, a kind of story which wraps up with something that, that I, I saw going on in the net. So um, the late Dawood Burban, Rahmatullah Ali, uh, Abu Talha, um, in 94, he was commissioned um, by, I think, Abu Daya to, to do a book. And so Dawood, Dawood, phone me and he asked what book and I said oh what about this this and this and one of them that I mentioned he said ah oh, I've got that in my list to do and it was Sharh Sunnah of al um so we thought fantastic since this book is on my list of doing and your list of doing go for it uh, and at that time Dawood said a second edition scholarly edition is coming out by a sheikh called Sheikh al-Radadi Khalid al-Radadi Mm -hmm. uh, there was one edition at that time by uh, Sayyid al Qahtan uh, as his PhD, and it got turned into a book. But there was a second edition coming out, so all the more to do it. And a few months later, uh, Dawood Abu Talha phones me up and he says, Ah, issue with translating the book. What's the issue? He says, um, Did you know? <laughs> That this book may not be a, might not be Imam Barbahari's. Yeah, I, I heard this. The first time I heard this recently. Yeah. I said, um, I have, I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, I, from what I recall, I said it's not in Kaktani's introduction. He doesn't mention that at all. He goes, no, no, it's in the new introduction by Radadi. Radadi says that the only manuscript we have. Anyway, I won't get into that. Um, yeah. One of the issues was uh, Barbahari might not have written the book. It could have been an earlier Hanbali scholar, Ghulam Khalil. I said, no problem. Is Ghulam Khalil a scholar? He goes, yes. It was he a humbly scholar? Yes. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, a, it's a book by a humbly scholar of an early period. If it's Ghulam Khalil, uh, mashallah, we get more points because he's 100 years earlier. <laughs> if it's Barbahari, not a problem. <laughs> nobody knows Barbahari anyway at that time in, yeah. in the English world. I said, okay, so that's done and dusted. We just stick with what Raddadi says. Sheikh Raddadi, in his research, what is his conclusion? Uh, Dawood said four points, and he feels these four points uh, lend weight to Barbahari being the author. I said, go for it. Just be like. Uh, within about two years, I actually then differed from that conclusion because I had a third edition came out, and I was convinced that Barbahari wasn't. But it made no difference because yeah. we weren't fixated because of Barbahari, although he was a legend in himself in terms of uh, how he was, <laughs> you know, in his adherence of Sunnah, uh, a bit more charismatic than Ghulam Khalil. But we were interested in what the book actually said. I said, so what's the second point? Now the second point was like, uh-oh. He said, 
Barbahari says about the attributes, we don't do ta we don't do ta'wil, we don't give tafsir, we don't do tafweed. Now I'm not going to go into it if the viewers don't understand, and I'm not going to go into it here because I don't want to, you know, make this podcast some kind of deep student of knowledge interaction. It's not going to be fair on the audience, I think, uh, unless of course you insist. But tafweed, we have a particular Ibn Taymiyyah view of tafweed. Uh, we believe that we don't ask how the attributes are, but we know what they mean. But they mean whatever they mean with the fact that Allah doesn't resemble his creation and vice versa. Mm. But I already knew by that time Ibn Qudama actually says we do tafweed because we, don't, we are not obliged to know the meaning of the attributes. And I know that Ibn Taymiyyah had strong words indirectly against Ibn Qudama and his grandfather, the Imam of the Humbly Madhab in his time, and nearly all of his teachers on this issue, and his teacher's teacher, because he mentions this in Majmul al uh, that I have issued, they got it wrong. When Barbahari comes along saying the word Tafweed, uh, I said to Dawood, at that time, I haven't thought about it deeply, but it was just adding to my, hmm, that's funny. Okay. Um, I, I said to um, da, uh, Dawood, Brother Dawood, uh, just add a footnote. Don't, I, I said, I think it's best to academically translate exactly what he says. And then any interpretation or meaning that we think he means, we should put it in a footnote, which is what uh, Abu Talha Dawood did, uh, Rahmatullah Ali. He explained that. Stuff with him. Uh, I'm going to have to open that. Do you remember what page it was? But I have to go down to my library and pull it out. Um, <laughs> uh, near the beginning, I guess, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, about point twenty twenty nine or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, but the point was, I thought, oh, tough weed. And then uh, during that time, I'm reading Ibn a, a, a booklet from Ibn Rajab, and he says the same thing. He says, and we leave the meaning to the one who says it. And what was kind of an, um, bugging me was, why can't they be clear like Ibn Taymiyyah? I later on come to find out by 97, 98, that no one other than, other than Ibn Taymiyyah says the sentence like we know how we Salafis say the sentence. Mm. Uh, we don't know the how, but we know the meaning. No one of the humbly Afri Salafi pedigree of scholars before Ibn Taymiyyah, or even after Ibn Taymiyyah, from his students, use that phrase. How about, wait, how this, what's the, wasn't it Imam Malik? The guy comes and asks indeed, him. Indeed, indeed. But that's yeah. the point. It's not that, if, so in all cases, let, let, let's make this as a foregone conclusion. In all cases, when Ibn Taymiyyah argues any point to do with any point of part of religion, He's going to have some serious proofs. This is not going to be off the cuff. His thinking is not going to be a piece of cake. It's going to be measured, deep, thorough. So we are not discussing, does Ibn Taymiyyah have a reason why he says this? Mm -hmm. He fleshes out his reason in five solid pages of arguments with his characteristic sharpness. The issue is, what was... The madhab of the Salaf prior to Ibn Taymiyyah, what it seems to be, at least um, openly, is when Ibn Taymiyyah is saying, none of my teachers got it right and none of my teachers' teachers. I mean, he has a, a, a very nice way of saying it. We at least know that he believes there is a disconnect between what he's saying and he believes to be the madhab of the Salaf on this point and the last 100, maybe 150 years. It just made me think. Uh, I mean, Sheikh, or oh, oh, <laughs> Sheikh, um, Sheikh Saleh Al Sheikh, who was quite a young scholar at that time, but still an amazing scholar at that time, uh, and one other Salafi Sheikh. Uh, I think it could have been Ibn Jibreel. At that time, I remember reading him. Mashallah, see Ibn Taymiyyah. He has so much courage. He's ready to stick with what he believes to be the truth, even if it goes against his teachers and his teachers' teachers. But my mind was working the opposite. I, it wasn't, you don't need to convince me of Tamian courage. That's done and dusted in my, in my mind. Okay? Uh, but you do now need to convince me as a kind of a real struggling Salafi. 
that how can we have this, um, uh, you know, uh, there will never cease to be a group of Ummah victorious upon the truth or evidently upon the truth until the hour is established. How can we have 150 years and someone doesn't know the Sifat of Allah on a major point? I remember putting this to some of the Salafi Mashaykh. And you know what? It was, there was, there was almost an ijma of interesting question, uh, Abu Alia, uh, we'll have to look into that. I asked two Jordanians, two Saudis and one Kuwaiti this question, sheikhs, with varying levels of knowledge, but all far above, above me or anyone that I knew in the UK. And they almost said the same thing. It's as if they had phoned each other and kind of concurred on an answer to give me, which they didn't. Literally, I said that. My point being is, why am I mentioning this? Um, I'm mentioning this for the, what Abdul uh, 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 said, that today's Salafism isn't quite like what it was in the past. And to that, I'll say, Alhamdulillah, as long as that is recognized, then I have very little problem with anything called Salafism, modern-day Salafism, conceptually. What I will have a, con a problem with, though, and which is why I, 1997, 98, I kind of like, I went where I, wherever I went was, um, as long as people are saying that is the original Islam, we've got this traditional Islam, no, but we want, uh, we're on original Islam, as long as they say this is original Islam, I have a huge problem with that, because that yeah, is... I can understand, it's dangerous, I can understand that. We respect them, but we want them to respect us. We think that the law should respect the Negro community. The law should protect the Negro community. The law should approach the Negro community with intelligence if it expects the Negro community to react intelligently.